Good morning, St. John. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be what? Glad in it. I was so glad when they said, let us come into the house of the Lord. Are you glad today? Amen. Let us stand for our scripture reading this morning, coming from Philippians chapter 3 starting at verse number 10 I want to know Christ yes to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his suffering becoming like him in his death and so somehow attaining the resurrection from the dead not that I have already obtained all of this all have already arrived at my goal but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me brothers and sisters I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it but one thing I do forgetting what is behind and straining to what is ahead I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me Heaven ward in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, we come before you again to say thank you. Father, you've been so good to us, Father. You've been better to us than we can ever be to ourselves. And Father God, right now, when we woke us up this morning, we was closed in our right mind. Thank you, Lord. Father, you put food on our table. Thank you. And Father God, you gave us a limb to be able to walk with, Father. Thank you. you gave us eyes to see. You. you gave us ears to hear. You. And you gave us a mouth to speak. So Father God, right now, we ask you to let us hear your word today. And let us shout thank you since you gave us the use of those items, Father. Some people did not have them today, Father. So we want to say thank you, thank you. We cannot thank you enough, Father. We know that we keep saying repetition, repetition over and over, thanking you for food, thanking you for clothes on our back, Father. But reality, look at it, Father. There are so many that do not have it, Father. So we want to say thank you, thank you. I cannot thank you enough. And Heavenly Father, right now, Father, I'm asking you to bless all the bereaved family, Father. All the ones that were laid to rest on yesterday, Father. Any ones that this morning that could not wake up, Father, bless those family. And Father God, bless all the sick among us, Father. Sickness all over the world, Father, so bless them, Father. And Father God, right now, I'm asking you to also bless, bless the online listeners, Father. When the pandemic came through, Father, it changed, it's changed the world, Father. Now some decide they want to stay home and listen to you, Father. That's all right, as long as they listen to you in true in spirit, Father. And Father God, we ask you to touch them this morning, Father. They need you too, Father. But Father God, I ask you to come into St. John today, Father. We need you not being a selfish person to think about only St. John, Father. Come into all your church storehouses, Father. Touch all the believers, Father. Even touch the non-believers too, Father. And Father, today when we receive your word, let us not take your word and just keep it to ourselves. Let's just take it and take it out abroad, Father. And Heavenly Father, right now, we just can't thank you enough. Heavenly Father, there are wars and there's rumors of war, Father. Over in the Middle East, Father. You got countries attacking the other countries for no reason, Father. And we also see that in the United States too, Father where we attack each other without any purpose, Father. Father God, we ask you to have mercy, Father. Your mercy, we need it, we need it, we need it, we need it. 
And Heavenly Father, right now, I want you to come into St. John, Father, and unify us, Father. We attack one another. We're supposed to be brothers and sisters. We're supposed to be Christian love. We're supposed to show that love. As the pastor say from time to time, St. John is, the, is love. So, Father God, we want to have love in this sanctuary, Father. We want you to touch and unify us, Father. Even your church covenant said we need to unify and we need to go with the majority, Father. So please allow us to do that. And Father God, right now, I'm asking you to touch all the way from the front door all the way to the uh, choir stand, Father. Touch each person in their respective place, Father. And Father God, right now, this world is coming into a turmoil, Father. And you said you would be a battle like in time of a battle, Father. So we need that right now, Father. We need you to cover us, Father. Cover us like you never covered us before. And Father God, as I close this prayer, Father, I want to thank you for your son, Jesus, who went up on the cross and he died for us. And one thing we like about the Father, he did not stay there. He got up. When he got up, he had all power. And he said, if you believe in also in me, he said, I will give you some of that power. So, Father God, we are calling on you today to give us some of that power. So, therefore, Father, that when we pray, we can lift people up, Father. When we touch, we can lift people up, Father. In your son, Jesus' name, I pray. Amen for the Father. Amen for the Son. Amen for the Holy Spirit. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Good morning. Praise the Lord. It's time to worship. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. Come on, you that are watching online. Good morning. Type it in the chat. It's time to praise the Lord. Come on, clap your hands like. Come on, everybody clap your hands. Come on, put your hands together. Glory, glory, glory to our King.
your hands. Say the Lord is. Come on, say it again. I have no reason. Come on, say it loud. The Lord is my light. The Lord is my light. Say.
Anybody knows, come on, anybody knows that the Lord, the Lord is, come on, my light, my salvation. Whom shall I fear? And, amen, 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 amen. Come on, let's put those blessed hands together. Amen. Let's put those blessed hands together. Let's put those blessed hands together and give the Lord some praise this morning. Amen. What a way, what a way to come into worshiping our God. Amen. Come on, what a way to come in to his sanctuary and worship him. Amen. Here on today. Listen, while those blessed hands are together, let's thank God for everyone that is worshiping online. Amen. Here on today. Amen. 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 I was just at our state convention and got a chance to see pastors across this state that are part of our state convention and you would you would be surprised, amen, as to how many um, pastors and people across this state have their eye, amen, on the worship experience here at St. John. And not that we come in here to impress people or, you know, to put on a show for other folks, uh, but just so that you know eyes are on you. And, that, uh, that, and so you ought to take that seriously. Listen, we come to worship and praise our God, but do you not know? Amen, that, that we set trends and set bars. And so then and we set standards. And so when we come in here, we don't come in here, amen, sluggish. I don't care what we go through, amen, because we come to praise our God. And then we're setting an example for other people, other Christians, other churches. Come on, y'all not hearing me today. Amen, amen, amen. Before we move any further, I just need to ask y'all my question this morning. Is there anybody that's glad about being in the service? Come on, one more time. Come on, anybody glad? Is there anybody glad about being in the service? Well, let me try it this way. Is there anybody glad about being alive? Amen. Come on, anybody glad about being alive? I didn't ask you what's going on in your life. I didn't ask you how much your bills or how, how your bills are stacked. But are you just grateful today just to be alive once again, God? You did it again, Lord. You, Lord, you, excuse my bunnies, you've done it again. You, Lord, you did it again. You woke us up this morning and here we are in your sanctuary. Come on, the bless his holy name. Now listen, while you're standing, don't get, don't sit down. You know, I want to, I want to be good to your knees. Amen. I want those, I want those blessed knees. Amen. To function the remainder of this worship experience. To all of our first time visitors. Amen. If you could just kind of slip your hand up. Amen. This way you don't feel alone. Just slip your hand up. First time here worshiping with us. Amen. I see you. Good to see you, my brother. Listen, following service. Amen. Any other first time visitors? And then um, let me see now, if you are visiting, this is, uh, you know, you came back for seconds and thirds, and perhaps this is the last time you come back for second and thirds as a visitor. But if you're visiting again, if you're visiting again, visiting again, amen, visiting again. All right, good to see you all. 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 Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Come on, good to see you. Good to see you. Come on, good to see you. Now, listen, St. John, what we want to do is, is that, listen, to all of our visitors, if you've never had the opportunity, meet us after service. You want to get a chance to briefly um, thank you for worshiping with us. And I'm going to tell you about my speech. My speech is selfish. It's selfish. I'm telling you it's selfish. So get ready for it. And the reason why it's selfish 
is because I don't want you to come back here the same way you came today. I want you to come back as a family member the next time you come. Amen. I'm telling you, it's very selfish. It's very selfish. I want you to come back as a family member. And so then I want you to meet us over in the visitor center. Amen. Following service. But listen, St. John, what we want to do, get out of your seat, out of your comfort zone, off of your pew with your pew buddy, and go and shake somebody's hand, give them a fist bump, let them know you're grateful to God to see them in the sanctuary one more time. Come on, can we do that? Let's go do that. Amen.
morning. Welcome to St. John Missionary Baptist Church, where Reverend Johnny L. Barber II is our pastor-elect. Here are this week's announcements. Men's Bible Study will be held on Monday at 7 p.m. The meeting will be conducted via Zoom. Meeting ID 898-1085-1684. Password 022-337. Alpha Pearl Foundation, in partnership with Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, presents our 19th annual golf tournament at the Indian Springs Country Club on Saturday, May 4th. Please see flyer or scan the QR code or contact Danielle Cross for more information. Kappa Foundation of Delray Beach in conjunction with the Delray Beach Alumni Chapter of Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated presents the Larry Thomas Memorial Scholarship Golf Tournament on May 18th. To register or sponsorship, please visit www.kappafoundationofdelray.org or scan the QR code. Elevation Men's Conference, Elevated, and a Single Garment of Destiny will be held on Saturday, June 15th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Loving God, loving people, and loving on the world. Attention Youth of St. John, the Youth Usher Board are in need of youth to usher on the third Sunday of each month. All interested individuals, please contact any Senior Usher Board member or Jaron Ivory. Looking forward to you joining this wonderful auxiliary. The National Coalition of 100 Black Women of South Palm Beach County Chapter would like to invite you to our 19th Annual Hat and Brim Scholarship Luncheon on April 20th, noon to 3 p.m at Benvenuto's Restaurant. We will be honoring our very own Yvonne Odom. Please contact Sister Desiree Jackson to purchase your tickets. The Boynton Beach Police Department gun safety event will be held on April 18th at 6 p.m. at the Boynton Beach Cultural Arts Center located at 125 Ocean Avenue, Boynton Beach. In a symphony of goodwill and grace, we invite you to join Pathways to Prosperity for Champagne Notes and Velvet Tones, an evening of jazz. This fundraiser will be a night of unforgettable inspiration. Champagne Notes and Velvet Tones will open doors to limitless opportunities that will turn everyday notes of generosity into forever melodies of change. Tickets are currently on sale at www.eventbrite.com. If you have any questions, please call Pathways to Prosperity at 561-903-7743. We are asking that there's no eating or drinking in the sanctuary. Thank you. We would like to say happy birthday to all celebrating a birthday this month. Happy birthday. Why fear depletes power, faith give wings for the soul's elevation. It's time to elevate. Have a blessed week. Amen, amen. Just a couple of more observations, amen. Sister Leverett, if you would come, amen, here on today, amen. I'm going to mess with her because I can. Now, you know these are some long guys. <laughs> amen, amen. Thank you. Good morning, St. John. Let's give God a hand praise. We're all here looking great. So the reason why we're here, Dominic, you could just hold it because it's going to slide. It's my cohort for the kids. And before I get started with this presentation, if I see any youth in this church that are between the ages of toddler up until 18, you need to follow me out. <laughs> Amen. Ain't no sitting up under mama. My, my brother used to do that at the old St. John, but we're here now. Amen. 
All right, so at this time, we're going to make a presentation to a very, very special young lady, and I'm going to call them forward. I'm going to call Dr. Corey and Dr. Gwenicia Collins, as well as their daughter, Leah. Now, for those of you that were here during Black History, this is your Queen of Sheba. So Leah Collins is the daughter of Dr. Corey and Dr. Gwenicia Collins. She is currently attending Atlantic, Sen Atlantic Senior High School where she is a senior this year. So the month of March was Leah's month because she was selected as the Scholar Athlete of the Month. Now, Leah's story was featured on WPBF TV 25 News, and if you would like to watch her full, full interview, you can find the video on YouTube. Leah participated in three sports. She was the captain of the cheerleading team. She was a regional qualifier as a weight lifter. And she is also a top flag football player for the Atlantic Eagles. And what most impressed me is that she is enrolled in the International Baccalaureate Program and is currently holding a 4.9 GPA. Leah is also a member of the National Honor Society and she volunteers in the community. And her future ahead is to attend her parents' alumni, now I know I got some shh in the house, fam you and study pre-med. So Leah, on behalf of St. John Missionary Baptist Church and Chosen Youth Ministry, we wanted to honor you today for your outstanding accomplishments, and you are certainly a role model for all of our kids in the back for Chosen Youth, and we are praying for your continued success as you continue to believe that you can accomplish all things through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And for those of you that watched Leah sway down this aisle as Queen of Sheba, she got a daddy. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you. Back to the pulpit. Yeah, let's give her another hand. No, we always say, who that said nothing good come out of St. John. Amen. Amen. Just a, a couple more announcements about the installation service. Uh, we gave you some dates last week to make sure you put in your calendar. Again, I'm going to remind you of those dates. Uh, the week of May 15th through the 19th, that will be the week of the installation. But there will be an ongoing celebration through the month of May and it might even be some celebration after May. But we want parents to mark this date because this, this one is right around the corner because we are going to do something for our youth, which will be May 4th, May 4th. So all parents, grandparents, godparents, that, that Saturday afternoon, at least for three to four hours, you're going to be able to drop your son or daughter off and go do whatever you need to do and you will get some babysitting service for that day. So mark your calendar. May 4th will be a youth day celebration kicking off our installation service. Amen? And thank you.
Amen. Thank you very much, Deke. Um, we, uh, yes, on that Saturday, we definitely want to have Pastor and the Peeps, the little Peeps, amen. We're going to hang out on that day and um, kick it with the little kids on, um, on Saturday, May 4th. And so please, ma'am, please, sir, you know, more information will be coming forth um, as to all of the details uh, for that particular day. But we're looking forward to just hanging out with the little kids to let them know that they are included in the overall Amen. Church, as we are celebrating uh, the installation. We also, uh, again, applaud, amen, our sister, amen, um, um, having been highlighted, one of the things that we shared uh, with Sister Leverett is that we're going to, we're, we're aiming to begin next month uh, on our Youth Sunday, having a youth spotlight or youth highlight um, on, on the Sunday of Youth Sunday uh, moving forward. And so we look forward to, um, she'll be working out the details, and you'll hear some appeals as, as we're trying to make sure we gather information um, about our young people because we want to highlight them, um, we want to include them, we want to love on them and let them know, amen, we once were them, amen, somebody, amen. I don't think any of y'all were born the age that you are, uh, but we once were them, amen, amen. And some of us didn't like church back then, amen. Tell the truth and shame the devil, amen. Oh, or maybe it was just me. <laughs> Amen. Didn't like church back then. Um, but look at how the Lord brought a, a non-church like. Amen. Talk Paul. Amen. The Apostle Paul, whose name once was Saul, persecuting the church. God can take you and then give you a total transformation and reverse reversal of who you are and your purpose in life. And so, uh, so we're looking forward to those highlights coming up uh, beginning next month and then as well as we're looking forward to next month celebrating and including our kids on May 4th. I want to take this opportunity on uh, last week Wednesday while at the state convention. We're grateful to our ministers and deacons and other leaders um, that, that made sure that Bible study went forth on last week Wednesday this month uh, as our, our, our yearly theme. Our year theme for 2024 is the year of elevation and this month we're focusing on elevating our emotions elevating our emotions, and we're grateful uh, for Minister uh, Delsu Frankson, who uh, led Bible study, amen, on, on last week, Wednesday, and we praise God, amen, for her, amen, sharing with us on last week, Wednesday, and I pray that you uh, consumed that information and then begin to apply it to your lives so that you can elevate your emotions, and so we're thankful uh, for all, amen, who led us on Wednesday, on Wednesday of last week. This week, Wednesday, this week, Wednesday, as we continue to pray uh, the new journey off right, uh, we will be praying that God would send favor in the church, that God would send favor in the church. And listen here, we'll be praying wherever you're at, at 12 noon, you don't have to pray, pray long in order for it to be strong, but wherever you're located on Wednesday, um, even if you stop right at 12 noon and just say, Lord, send favor in the church. That's all you have to do, amen, at 12 noon if you don't have the space and the room to do so. Uh, but we encourage you at 12 noon, we'll all be asking God to send favor in the church. And then at 6.30, we'll gather that evening and we'll gather for our corporate prayer. We'll come together in prayer is open for everyone. It's not just for the deacons, not just for preachers, but everyone come 6.30 to 7, right up to the time of Bible study, and we'll be asking God to send favor in the church. Um, my pastor used to say this thing. He said, sometimes in life, you have to just ask God to allow you to just be the saucer. He said, you don't always have to be the cup. But if you could just ask God to be the saucer, he says, because when the cup begins to overflow, whatever is in the cup, it flows over to the saucer. And he used to talk about before he was old enough, but he said uh, how his dad would pour coffee and he would watch his dad drinking coffee and his dad would take and pour a little bit from the coffee cup into the saucer saucer and he'd give it to his son and he said you couldn't tell him nothing he thought he was drinking coffee like his daddy was and uh, but what he realized is that what was in the cup was just as good what was in the saucer was just as good as what was in the cup 
And so as we pray and ask God to send favor in the church, that's the cup. And as the cup overflows, amen, y'all not hearing me in here today. That means if you're connected to this church, if you're connected to this church, if you're a member, family member of this church, if you are, amen, even a friend of this church, God is going to bless us and favor going to fill up the cup and the cup going to begin to overflow. And the favor that shows up in the life of the church, you're going to start seeing that same favor showing up in your house and in your, your bank account and in your mind and in, in your connections in life. And you're going to look around and wonder what's going on. Well, let me tell you in advance before it starts to happen. The reason why it's happening is because you're connected to a church where God's favor is filling the cup and it is overflowing into your life. So I encourage you, saints of God, to join us Wednesday as we come together uh, for a time of prayer. It's, it just kind of reminds me of my mom when she was living. And, and while we didn't like church, she used to make me and my brother, amen, every now and then come join her in the room with prayer. And um, I didn't like that either because I heard them prayers when I was outside of her room. And that woman would be praying all night long. And then she called us in there to pray, and I was like, God, we're going to be in here all night long praying. <laughs> but brothers and sisters, there is power in prayer. God hears, and then he answers prayers. And so I'm appealing to you, church, as we are praying this new journey off right between pastor and people. Amen. We want God to send favor in the life of the church. And so, so saints of God, join us Wednesday at 12 noon and then Wednesday evening at 630. Uh, we want to thank also thank you for all of those who uh, on yesterday, um, you thought it not robbery to come and to be with uh, the family of Sister Estella Mae Jones in whom we laid to rest on yesterday and uh, said our final farewells on this side and to be here with that family. We thank God for all of those who served the ushers and uh, choir and, and musicians we thank God for you we thank God for those who served in the kitchen amen we thank God for all of you sometimes sometimes you don't realize it but your presence is also serving um, it's a sign of comfort and so that's why I made that appeal on last week not because it was sister Jones but um, but I remember the churches of old that when somebody passed away only thing they ask, they may ask two questions. They may ask, who is it? But then they'll ask, were they a member of our church? And when they tell them that they were a member of the church, people turned aside time from their schedule um, because that's a church family member. And we came to comfort the family and also to remind them um, that one day we all will reunite together in glory and be with our Lord forever. And so hence, that's why we call it a homegoing celebration for those that love the Lord. And so I want to say thank you for those that did turn aside time. And then as you continue to grow and, and mature in your faith, uh, saints of God, uh, when the Lord calls another family member home, amen, we want to do what we can, amen, to be here and to be in support of our family member. I also want to encourage us, saints of God, to keep uh, Brother Kelvin uh, Ferguson lifted up in prayer. Um, he's about to have open heart surgery, and we're believing um, that God is uh, the great physician and that he can use these mere human doctors and anesthesiologists. He can use them, amen, for his will and for his glory. And so we want you to keep the Ferguson family lifted up, and specifically Brother Kelvin Ferguson, also soliciting your prayers, brothers and sisters, uh, for Sister Pamela Newsom, her son, Christopher Newsom, uh, passed away on Tuesday. And, um, and they're funeralizing him. His homegoing service is going to be Saturday the 20th, this coming Saturday, uh, at the Resurrection House Empowerment Ministry International. Amen. And so uh, that is 200 Sterling Avenue, Delray Beach, Florida. And so we want you to keep um, these names uh, that have come before uh, my presence uh, it lifted up in prayer, and then there are others of us. We, uh, we look good on the outside, but you don't know about the storms that we have going on on the inside. And so that's why we have to pray, amen, one for, one for another, amen. 
Amen. And then every day your eyes open and your feet are able to either hit the ground. And then for those, amen, that's in wheelchairs and your feet are hovering above the ground. You ought to thank God for being alive. Y'all not hearing me today. You ought to thank God for being alive. And that's why when we gather in the sanctuary, amen, we ought to come with uplifted voices, amen, giving our God praise and lifting up his name, thanking him, magnifying him, amen, with our lifted hands and lifted voices, and even the countenance on our face should look like we are blessed. Are there any blessed people in this house on today? We come now in worship to worship God by the giving and the sharing of the fruit that he has been so good and so kind and so merciful to bless us to have in our possession. Now listen, as they're moving into place, amen, while this is on my mind because something will come in and, and erase it, uh, but where are all of, all of the husbands and wives that are celebrating anniversaries this month. Where are you? If you would stand. Where you? Where, where are you? Celebrating an anniversary this month. Amen. Okay, all right. See you there, Deke. All right. Nobody else didn't want to acknowledge y'all celebrating an anniversary this month. Y'all going to be in trouble when y'all go home. Amen. I'm <laughs> Somebody going to be in. Who, who's else? Okay, all right. There we go. Okay, all, all right. All right. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's put our hands together and celebrate these couples that are celebrating anniversaries this month. Amen. Hey, oh, all right. Up, okay, upstairs there in the balcony as well. Amen. Praise God today. Amen. We pray God's continue showering and showing up of love in your relationship and we will make sure amen as we move forward in a formal way that that becomes a part of our worship where we acknowledge all of our couples Amen, that are celebrating anniversaries. If you would, get your gift, your, your electronic device, amen, and ways to give electronically are going to come on the screen. Uh, but we want, to, we want to ask God's blessing right now as we prepare our hearts and our minds to go to God in prayer. Father in heaven, we love you, we adore you, we praise your name. We thank you, dear God, for blessing us with life. And God, we are gathered here to lift up your name and to magnify you, God. Lord, as we do it today, God, we also come to worship you through the act of giving, God. Faithfully bringing our tithe, faithfully giving offering, faithfully, God, giving sacrificially to you, God. Some, God, did not even wait till Sunday, but God, they've already given, taken, taking advantage of technology and have already given, God. Lord, we ask of you humbly to witness, dear Lord, the givers and then the gift God as you look at the givers I pray and ask of you God to show yourself to be God that we would never find ourselves lacking begging for bread and then bless this church to be a good and a faithful steward over everything that you have placed in her possession God properties God buildings God pews carpet God lights God everything not just the money God everything you placed in our possession. Help us to be a good and faithful steward because it belongs to you. And God, as you do it, we won't take any of the glory, the honor, or the praise, but God will give it all to you. We pray this humbly in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen.
Amen. Praise God. Thank you all in how you've give, given on today and honoring, honoring our God here on today. I stand here today um, to, to take and to introduce um, our, our guests on today. In the process of the church um, doing their interview, one of the questions that was asked about, asked towards me rather, was, you know, my, my view and my vision as far as missions and, and, and global mission um, beyond beyond not only this these walls, this community, um, but the way I interpret it when the question was asked about global uh, missions, uh, you're talking about beyond this state, beyond this country, and you're talking about just this world. And um, I had the privilege um, a couple of years ago, a year or two ago, to, to meet this gentleman and got a chance to um, got a chance to find out more not only just about him but but the work that he is connected to uh, our guest uh, preacher um, he uh, works for and is a part of an organization called compassion uh, international and for 70 years compassion international um, they've served uh, over three million children saved not just served but saved over three million children from poverty their mission statement <clears throat> Their mission statement is releasing children from poverty in Jesus' name. Compassion International serves in 20, 29 different countries, and they have, they have frontline churches um, in some of the most impoverished places in the world. They provide food, clothing, clean water, medical care, um, Christ uh, Center Education and other resources to take and to give these children in these impoverished areas hope beyond the hopelessness. And to date, Compassion has released uh, over 2.5 million children from poverty and their goal and their goal for, for next year um, is to take and to increase that. In November, that's right, amen, amen. In November of 2022, um, our guest, Reverend Harper, um, he joined Compassion uh, International as a church engagement and relationship manager uh, for the African American church. Reverend Harper, he travels throughout the country um, and internationally uh, working with pastors to take and to create strategic partnerships in order to help children gain their freedom from from poverty there's a text uh, in proverbs 19:17 that says he who has pity on the poor lends to the lord and he will pay back um, what uh, he has given um, brothers and sisters um, there is a video that's going to be played just to so that you can get a glimpse of the work of that compassion international does and then the choir is going to bless us with the song. And then the next preaching verse voice is going to be behind the sacred da desk uh, will be that of Reverend Gabriel Harper. And some of you may say, well, why is he, why is he here? Why is he preaching? It's not just to introduce uh, this organization to us, um, but by chance after the service, you know, there will be some of you that can personally support a child, that can personally support a child. One of the things that we will gather and we'll chat about um, is how, as a church, that we can sponsor perhaps a village, uh, perhaps uh, several children as a church because we could do more, uh, amen, together. And so this video is going to play, and then following the video, the next, um, after the video, the choir will bless us with a song of preparation. And then the next preaching voice behind this desk will be that of Reverend Gabriel Harper, uh, he's going to bless us with the word, uh, amen, from the Lord. I'm going to tell you that I'm going to tell you that I'm going to go around. I'm going to go around to the other. Na tuona besa isio nisio tu hota uka utaidia misi itu. Okoro nita muana to si uke duwata imaga hota kumugulira. Kona koro no jeteri yu miso kwa mwerini kutaidio no kompaso.
being here allowed us not only to hear, but to feel the cry of the mothers. All they wanted was more for their children, more of an opportunity, more of an opportunity of schooling, of food, of, of better shelter. And who best can help a mother than another mother? This is the birthing of a revolution. And I think it's the revolution of eradicating poverty of children in Jesus' name. And he needs our hands, our feet, he needs our resources, and that's what we're here to do. It's not enough to just experience it but we've got to do what's necessary to make the change. One child in one family affects an entire family.
here this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. I'm so glad I have a personal relationship with him. I don't know about you, church, but I'm glad he knows my name. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. Thank you for walking with us. Thank you for talking with us. Thank you for not forgetting us. We can't do life without you. Including myself, God, we need you to move on our behalf today. Some of us are going through some challenging situations. And God, we need you to work a miracle, to make a way, to open up a door, to touch our bodies. To that person who has open heart surgery, the Ferguson family, I want to speak this scripture, Psalms 107 verse 20. And he sent his word and he healed them, pulling them from their destruction. I speak healing over your life this morning. See anybody under the sound of my voice that you know that you need God to make a way out of no way. I speak right now that God will intervene into your situation that you will know that God knows your name. Now God speak through me. Preach me Jesus. As I stand behind this sacred desk. We give your name the glory. We give your name the praise. In Jesus name. Let the church say amen. Amen. And amen. Come on and put your hands together. If you're excited to be in the house of the Lord. For David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Well, good morning, St. John. Again, my name is Reverend Gabriel Harper. I'm so humble, elated and excited to be here. I want to thank God for your pastor, Pastor Johnny Barbara. Come on, come on and put your hands together. Your pastor elect. Thank you for believing in this man of God. He's a dear brother, beloved of mine, and I'm enjoying our journey of growing and getting to know one another. But this morning, this is Compassion Sunday. If you have not heard of it, I want to just take a moment and explain to you just a little bit more who Compassion International is. Again, we're located in Colorado Springs, uh, Colorado. God opened up this door for me in 2022 to be able to travel nationally and even internationally to show pastors the work that we do. This morning on the table in the foyer, we have highlighted children in Ghana and in Haiti that need someone to sponsor them. There are 355 million children that are trapped in poverty. I wanna say that number one more time. I said 355 plus children right now that's trapped in poverty. We're working every day to change that. That's why I'm here this morning. Children in the Compassion Program are up to 40% more likely to finish secondary education. 
Here it is, children in compassion program are 80% more likely to graduate from college. See, these children don't have the fruits and the labors from their parents like we do to send our children to college to get a loan or some of us we pay. No, they don't even believe that they can make it to school. But because of compassion, because of someone showing them kindness like you, myself, there is hope for them to have a better future. And here it is. Children in Compassion Program are up to 75% more likely to become leaders in their communities. And literally since last year, Compassion has served 2.2 million children, 1.5 million children in medical interventions. If it were not for Compassion International, some of these children would not be able to have medical help at all. 10.6 million. Uh, we serve 10.6 million children and families when it comes to family food packages. Hygiene kicks over 16 million. Given to disaster relief, 1.3 letters written to children. I come here this morning just to explain to you all how you can show kindness to children. But listen, I have a word for you. I have a word from the Lord in 2 Samuel chapter 9, verses 1 through 7. 2 Samuel chapter 9, verses 1 through 7. In this entirety of the story, it goes through 1 through 13. Read it in your leisure. But this morning, I just want to highlight a few verses. In the New Living Translation Version, 2 Samuel chapter 9, if you have it, you can say amen. Amen. And the word of the Lord says, One day David asks, Is anyone in Saul's family still alive? Anyone to whom I can show kindness for Jonathan's sake? You may be seated. That's enough. <laughs> For the sake of preaching, I want to tag this text with the topic. When favor tracks you down. I want you to find the neighbor to look like they came to church this morning and say, neighbor, neighbor. when favor neighbor. tracks you down. Father, I stretch my hand to, oh Lord, to Thee. I say from from thee oh tell me where shall I go I need I come 
to thee Let the church say yeah Let me hear your church Yeah Let me hear you say yeah Oh, say yeah You sound good this morning Say yeah Oh, yes Lord You may be seated have your way Have your way Have your way Have your way Oh Have your way When favor tracks you down I'd like to share a story with you about a young boy who grew up in New Orleans in the 1920s, raised by a struggling single mother. This young boy couldn't finish school because it was so difficult for his mother to find resources to take care of the family. So he dropped out of fifth grade and began to work for a Jewish family. This family soon after began to provide this young boy hot meals. Uh, they began to even give him resources that he needed, clothing, liquids, food, and even a bed to sleep in. This family somewhat adopted this young boy and began to provide other needs for him to help advance his life to the next level. But on one particular day, this Jewish mother lent this young boy $5 to go and purchase his first cornet, similar to what you would think to be a trumpet. And they encouraged him to learn how to play and to sing. So he purchased the cornet, but still found himself looking for purpose and direction. He ended up getting arrested and was sent to a home for troubled colored boys. Not knowing that his trouble would lead him to a life of triumphant, trailblazing life to where he blew his trumpet all over the world. Maybe some of y'all know who I'm talking about. This young boy ended up being one of America's greatest trumpeteers and vocalists. His career spanned over 50 years. He ended up winning the Grammy for Best Vocal Male Performance for Hello, Dolly. He won the Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award in 1972 and was inducted into the National Rhythm and Blues Hall of Fame in 2017. I'm talking about the late and great young. Here it is. Y'all know him. What's his name? Louis Armstrong. And for years to come, he will wear a star of David around his neck to remind him of his benefactor's kindness. Five dollars. Change this boy's life. Now join me in the theater of my mind as we take a quantum leap into 2 Samuel chapter 9. Where David, here it is, woke up one morning. And he said, is there anybody in Saul's family that I can steal? Here it is, that's still alive that I can show kindness to. For Jonathan's sake. Zeba says, there's one of Jonathan's son left but he is crippled in both of his feet. But don't miss this church. The king asked, is anyone still in Saul's family alive? He didn't ask if anyone was crippled. David didn't ask if he knew of anyone that was struggling with a disability. 
But pay attention to Zeba. Zeba knew Jonathan's sons by his condition first, rather his name. Come on, somebody. I want to parenthetically pause for one hot second and tell somebody, watch this, the people who call you by your condition is getting ready to know you by your position. Oh, you ought to find a neighbor, say, neighbor, your position is getting ready to change. It's getting ready to change. I love how David is non-judgmental in verse 4. David doesn't change his mind because Jonathan's son is lame in both feet. He commits to his decision. And he asks Zeba, where is he? The king, he asks, he, and, and Zeba says he's in the place called Lodabar. Zeba told him at the home of Machair, the son of Amiel. My friends, this morning, Lodabar was a lonely place in the northern part of Gilead. Lodabar literally means not having or no pastor. Lodabar was considered a town of forgotten people. A place where there were low hopes, low dreams, low resources, low education, low skills, and feeling low on love. Those who lived in Lodabar lived, here it is, below the bar. And this is what we call poverty-stricken communities and countries. When you read Jeremiah chapter 8, it gives you some context about how challenging it was in that geographical location. The prophet Jeremiah cries out to God in anguish and Jeremiah 8. Some of us, we know this famous cry when uh, Jeremiah cried out, Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? In this geographical area, the people intentionally bypassed Lodabar. They went around this place. Likewise, we don't even think about places like Lodabar until we see the videos that we just watched on the screens a few minutes ago. You may see a commercial on TV of children living off less than a dollar ninety cent a day. It's the commercials we see with hungry children plagued with diseases, struggling with physical and mental challenges, with no medication, hardly any education, most with no running water or toilet even in the home, living in a hut. And on top of that, some of these children are left in traumatizing situations, not having any parents to help them get through these challenging situations. But Fibbishev, he can relate. Listen to what happened to him in 2 Samuel, chapter, 2 Samuel chapter 4, verse 4. It was when Saul's son, Jonathan, had a son named Mephibosheth. It said it's in 2 Samuel 4, verse 4, who was crippled as a child. He was five years old when the report came from Jezreel that Saul and Jonathan had been killed in battle. When the child's nurse heard the news, she picked him up. And she began to run. But she was running so fast that she ended up dropping them. And he became crippled. All in one day, St. John, little Mephibosheth, he loses his father. He loses his grandfather. He loses the security in that his grandfather was king. And on top of that, dealing with major loss, at five years old, he was dropped by his nurse and left him crippled for the rest of his life. Many of us this morning are dealing with our own personal crippleness, crippled from a broken heart, crippled in our hope this morning, crippled in our thoughts. Crippled in our dreams and aspirations. Crippled in our careers. And many of us come to church every Sunday dealing with some form of crippledness. It may not be that you are crippled in both of your feet. But 
We are crippled because somebody dropped us at one or at, at one time in our life. And it hurts bad to know that your mama dropped you. Somebody is hurting this morning because your daddy dropped you. Some family member dropped you off or somebody else raised you that wasn't your biological parents and they dropped you because they couldn't handle you. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but I know that there is somebody that's dealing with being dropped. <coughs> the reality is some of us Struggle with the crippleness of hiding what has happened to you behind closed doors. Somebody know as a child something happened to you. And the crippleness showing up in your adulthood. It's showing up in your relationships. Showing up in your emotions. And this month is the month for you to elevate behind that crippleness. But that's what poverty feels like. Poverty feels like to millions of children and families all over the world that somebody has dropped me and they don't care. Poverty is crippling to the mind. Is crippling to the body and soul. Poverty cripples your dreams and your aspirations. The same way that you feel like somebody has dropped you in childhood. Just imagine living like that every day of your life. And not having a church to come to on Sunday morning. Not having a pastor to lay hands on you to pray for you to get through your challenging situations. That's what poverty is. <clears throat> All over the world. But there's hope this morning. There's hope in the text. And I pray that somebody hears me this morning because there's a child waiting on you. There's a child waiting for you to show kindness to them the same way that David showed kindness to Mephibosheth. But here it is this morning. Let me get to my few Sunday school points and I'm going to take my seat. There are some truths that we can learn from David's compassion. And if you find yourself living below the bar, the first truth that we can find in the text, number one, is that our position can change because of a previous promise. Yeah, 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 yeah. I want you to repeat after me. My position, My position. <coughs> can, change can change because of a previous promise. When you read in 1 Samuel chapter 20, verse 14 to 17, you will learn about the relationship that David and Jonathan had. They were good friends. They were beloved brothers. David kept his promise to Jonathan. And here we are in the current text in 2 Samuel chapter 9, verses 6 through 7. It reads, his name was Mephibosheth. He was Jonathan's son and Saul's grandson. And when he came to David, he bowed low to the ground in deep respect. David says, greeting Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth replied, I am your servant. No, David says, don't be afraid. I intend to show you kindness because of a promise that I kept to your father. Brothers and sisters, what I'm trying to show you is that if God can use the love of two friends who kept their word for each other, how much more will God fulfill his promises for you and your family? Numbers 23 verse 19 says, God is not a man, help me preach, Holy Ghost, that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said and he shall not do it? Or hath he spoken and it shall not make good? If I may, let me remind you of some of the promises that we can hold on to. 
Deuteronomy 31 verse 8 says, the Lord himself goes before you. Help me preach God. And he will be with you. And he will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. John 14 verses 1 through 3. This is a promise that we can hold on to. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. That's the promise. And receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. Jennifer Hudson wrote a song. He promised me a home over there. That's the promise. Here it is. Whatever we don't get in this lifetime. Somebody say, there's a promise on the other side. But not only do we see the crippled position change by a promise. But second of all, number two, our position can change because of providential placement. Providential placement. Verse seven. Watch this. It says, I will give you all of the property that once belonged to your grandfather Saul. And you will eat here with me at the king's table. I said there's providential placement. In other words, can you imagine going from living in poverty in low the bar, living below the bar, and all of a sudden, God brings you to the king's table. That's just like God. He'll make, he'll make ways out of no ways. He'll turn your circumstances around so quick you don't even know how in the world that happened to you. And I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but I got a feeling that somebody needs providential placement in your life. You're wondering how you ended up in this place. You're wondering how in the world you're going to get out of this place. Somebody say, but God. He's coming to track you down. Oh, hallelujah. But, 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 but here it is. Mephibosheth went from below the bar to living above the bar. He went from being overlooked to sought out. Mephibosheth went from a land of no pasture to owning his own pasture. He went from not having to having everything that he needed. Thank you, Holy Ghost. He went from sitting in a lonely place to a higher place at the king's table. And I don't know who needs to hear this, but your placement in life is getting ready to change for the better. It's only a few of you who just clapped right there. Some of you missed it, but for those of you who caught that point, you ought to repeat after me, my place in life is getting ready to change for the better. Oh, yeah. See, some of y'all don't believe it because you're good. All your bills paid, your, your health is good. But this is just a small remnant of us in here that can testify. I need God to change some things in my life. Everything right now ain't hunker and dory. Everything is not here. It is the way I needed to go. I need God to come and track me down and to tell me that everything is going to be all right. Is there anybody in here that can testify this morning? I believe God can change my situation. For the last 17 years of my life, I've been serving the homeless community in Atlanta, Georgia. I started in 2007 when I was working with Elizabeth Baptist Church of Cascade Road, Dr. Craig L. Oliver. He licensed me, and I served the homeless in the corridors in the inner city of Atlanta. Then I transitioned, went over to the House of Hope Atlanta. Some of y'all may know Dr. E. Dewey Smith. He licensed, uh, he, he, he hired me as the outreach pastor. But watch this. My journey started from feeding people under the bridges. My journey started feeding people in the woods. My journey started preaching, here it is, on some of the most impoverished streets in Atlanta that most people wouldn't go by. And I would go there every first and third Saturday of the month preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Then I transitioned over to, and I got hired to being, here it is, a outreach director. Did you, did, did you hear what I said? I said I started just serving up under the bridges. 
Then I got hired as an outreach director. Helping, here it is, those experiencing tornadoes and hurricanes. We would see trucks all over the nation. But then one day, I found myself just like one of these individuals with no job, living with a family friend member in an unemployment line. But I still was serving the homeless. One particular Saturday, I said the same food in the same line that my volunteers bought. I had to get in that same line. Won't God humble you sometimes? Won't life keep, won't life take you down a path to where, listen, I don't know how I got here, but Lord, I need you to make a way. But I'm standing before you today in 2024 and 41 years old telling you the same God that kept me then is the same God that will keep you in your situation. And the same God that kept me when I was a volunteer, the same God that kept me when I was a part-time worker, now opened up a door for me to work internationally, traveling all over the world, been to Africa twice, to the Dominican Republic, helping those that are experiencing homeless. God can change your placement in life. When you're going through situations that you don't know how you're going to get out of them. I remember turning to 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 6 through 10, where it says, So humble yourselves under the mighty power of God, and at the right time, he will lift you up in honor. Give all of your worries and cares to God, for he cares for you. Stay alert, watch out for the great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. Remember that your family believes all over the world. It, it says here it is. Remember that your family of believers all over the world is going through the same kind of suffering you are. But the shouting verse. I love verse 10 when Peter says in his kindness. God called you to share his eternal glory by means of Christ Jesus. So after you suffered a little while, somebody may be suffering this morning. Somebody may not have everything you need. You may have your own poverty situation going on. But Peter said after you suffered a little while, he will restore you. He will support you. And he will strengthen you. And he will place you on a firm foundation. All power to him forever and amen. I told you I won't be with before you long. I'm on my last point. I'm going to take my seat. Not only can our position change because of a previous promise. Not only our position can change because of providential placement. But last and finally, our position can change because of perpetual provision. In other words, verse 13 says, and Mephibosheth, who was crippled in both feet, lived in Jerusalem and ate regularly at the king's table. In other words, he didn't eat at the king's table sometimes. He didn't eat at the king's table just on the holidays in Easter Sunday. He didn't eat at the table just on Christmas and Thanksgiving. But somebody say he ate at the king's table all the time. Regularly, continually, and perpetually. As I close uh, this sermon, I, I studied this passage. And I seen how God took care of Mephibosheth through a previous promise. He took care of Mephibosheth through providential placement. And he's taking care of Mephibosheth through perpetual provision. But when you come out of your loader bar, or when you come from out of living below your bar, you can give God praise because you know God to be a provider. And I wonder, is there anybody this morning that can testify? He's been a God that put food on my table. He's been a God that put clothes on my back. 
He's been a God that has paid all my bills. He's been a God that helped me see things that I couldn't see. And you can praise God this morning for God being a provider. But you can also praise God for being a protector. When you didn't know how you was going to come out of that situation, the Lord, he protected you from seeing and unseen danger. God, he's not only a provider, he's not only a protector, but you can praise God this morning for being a presider. In other words, he told you to go right when you're sitting the wind left. He's presiding over your life. And you ought to give God praise this morning because you don't look like what you've been through. And I close you with a few verses this morning. David says, I've been young and now I'm old. But one thing I never seen, I never seen the righteous forsaken, nor the seed begging bread. Is there anybody this morning that can testify? I remember when God kept my family, kept my marriage, kept my children, kept my lights on. When I almost lost everything, he kept everything. I got one more verse for you. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28 through 31. One of my favorite verses of scripture. Has thou not known? Has thou not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth. Faint of night, neither is he weary. There's no searching for his understanding. He give power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. And the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young man shall utterly fall. But, I said, but, but, they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up on wings as eagles they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint God bless you St. John I gotta take my seat I stop by to tell somebody that favor shall track you down I don't care how it's looked like today the Lord he hasn't forgotten you the Lord he will keep you so be not dismayed whatever betide you God will I said God will God will take care of you God bless you this morning God bless you this morning favor will track you down. Now listen. David woke up and said, is there anybody that I can show kindness to? For one moment, he wasn't thinking about himself. The king. He said, there's a promise that I need to fulfill. There's a child that's waiting on somebody's kindness right now. I know some of you saying, I cannot afford to do another thing because I'm in my own situation. But how many of you know it's a, it's a blessing to give than to receive? What you do for one, God will turn it around and do it for you. There's a QR code that I would like to be placed up here. And if indeed you find it in your heart to say, I want to sponsor a child for $25 a month to where I'm helping them with their education, their clothing, their food, their water, and putting them in a Christ-centered place 
I want you to scan this QR code. But not only the QR code, but there is a table in the foyer that you can take a moment and you can pick out a child from Ghana, Africa, or from Haiti. And I want you to be their David today. I want you to literally say, I'm going to get from beside myself for just one year. Just one. You can keep this child and write letters to him, send gifts to him. You can do all of that, send birthday gifts. But for at least one year, I'm going to challenge me and my family to sponsor a child on behalf of St. John. And watch this, St. John. I didn't tell your pastor this. I just thought about this. Watch this. When you sponsor a child, and the more children you sponsor in this church, watch this, Compassion International, we're going to take your pastor on an all-expense-paid trip <clears throat> to see the work that we do. So either Ghana or Haiti or the DR, Pastor Barbara is going to be traveling internationally with me to see the children that you sponsor. So we need your help this morning to sponsor children. May God bless you. May he have a smile upon you. I turn it back over to you. Amen. Come on, let's give Reverend Harper, amen, a hand clap of praise and thanking God, amen, for him on today. Listen, as you're standing, would you stand? This is the invitation for Christian discipleship. While, while Reverend Harper made the appeal for, for your support, um, I do pray that you would uh, place it on your heart uh, to do so. And then, as well as make sure that you stop by the table in the vestibule uh, because some may have more questions that they want to ask. But let's thank God right now for the word of God today. Come on. Yes, yes, as a church, not only internationally, but yes, locally, we do understand that Matthew 25 text where Jesus said, when I was naked, you clothed me. When I was hungry, you fed me. When I was in prison, you visited me. And Master, when did we do this to you? He says, in as much as you have done it to the least of these, you've also done it to me. And so we do understand internationally, also we'll be doing and looking as a church some things locally, we do know there's, there's some work that has to be done right in our own backyard. But right now, right now, right now, right now, listen, right now, this is an appeal for Christian discipleship. You don't know Jesus and the pardoning of your sins. We want to offer Jesus Christ to you. And then if you are saved you know jesus as your lord and savior but you are without a church home i stand here today as the inviter the greeter the welcomer the informer and heralder letting you know that we want you to become a part of this church family we want you to become a part of our church family thought about something I had not said this since I've been here but it's might as well a good time to crack open this one I would love the opportunity to not just be your brother but to be your pastor and so if you're here today and you don't have a church home but you know Jesus we invite you to come if you are not saved, we invite you to come. And then perhaps this was, this was your church home and you drifted away for whatever reasons. Listen, I, I tell you, this is a no judgment zone. We're not judging where you've been and why did you leave and, and all of that other murmuring things that sometimes it's all in our head and all in our mind. But trust me, we're not judging you. Because we understand our job description and responsibility is to celebrate and to praise God for that one soul that was lost but now is found. And so if you're here, my brother, 
if you are here, my sister, perhaps in the balcony, perhaps to my right, perhaps to my left or to the center, if you're here, wherever you're at in this sanctuary, we invite you to come today. And then if you're online, if you're online, listen, you could, you could send it in the chat, amen, or you could email the church and tell them, listen, that you've received salvation and that you've become a part of this church family, um, even in our virtual campus and so if you're here would you come today come my brother come my sister this is your day your chance your hour you can walk out right now you can walk out right now you could walk out right now if you're here today would you come would you come would you come would you come come on we offer Christ to you come on we offer Christ we offer I see you coming sis come on oh we Oh, we offer. Come on, y'all didn't celebrate right. I didn't. I, I didn't hear no. Come on, y'all didn't celebrate. The Lord sent. Oh, He will give you. I see you coming. I see you coming. I see you coming. Come on, whole oh, new life. Yeah, new life abundantly. Oh, come, oh, come, oh, come, oh, come, oh, come. Oh, come. Come on, come on to Christ. Believers ought to be praying. We thank God for our sister. But there perhaps is someone else here today. You need to come. You need to come on back home. This is your day. The Lord has spared your life. He's lengthened your days so that you can make it to the sanctuary one more time. Tomorrow is not promised. Next Sunday is not promised. You ought to come. You ought to come. If there's someone else today, come on. This is your day, your chance, your hour. Come on, the Lord. He will give you brand new life. He'll give you life that is more than abundant. More than abundant. If you're here. Oh, come on, come on. Well, come on to Christ. Listen, we're going to whisper a word of prayer. But as we are praying, if you feel compelled to the Holy Spirit to come and to make this your church home, if you feel compelled to the Holy Spirit to come back home, while we are praying, we encourage you. You can walk down this way, amen, even while we are praying. Would you bow with me? Would you bow with me? And let's pray in the Spirit. God, our Father, we thank you for your messenger and then Lord we thank you for the word we're grateful God to know that favor can track us down God Lord we will be praying for favor in the church God and there's a, a great reminder today that no, no matter where we are located and what our position may be that your favor can find us God change our position so we pray you replenish the strength poured out today yet from our preacher God that he might live a long time to share to share the gospel and then God we're thanking you in advance God for the harvest in which you sent our way Lord we know we don't deserve it God we know that we shouldn't even think that we're privileged that there was something that we did, but God, we thank you because you saw fit to sin, God. We thank you now in Jesus' name. And then, God, if there's another God's soul that needs salvation, we're praying it right now. We're praying it. And then, God, if there's a soul that needs to come home, God, let them know that this is not hostile territory, but this is the house of love. And we, we intend to love on them and welcome them back, God. God, we want your name to get glory out of all that we say and all we do. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. As you take your seat, once you give, come on the Lord, some praise in this house. Amen on today. Amen. Bless the name of the Lord. Amen. Madam Clerk. Amen. Oh, okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. Good morning, St. John. Amen. I'm so deeply happy this morning and really overwhelmed with what is happening right now. We thank God for our visiting pastor, but Pastor Barbara, we want to thank you this morning. But it's just so warm and hard feeling when a child come home. Amen. And this morning, we have Catherine Lawson just coming back home. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. Sister Allen don't say it at all. Uh, but but I didn't get the response from y'all when a child come back home. Our sister is coming back home. I, I, I can't hear y'all. I said a child has come back home. Come on, I still can't hear y'all. Let's say a child is coming. Come on, back home. Come on. Come on. Praise the Lord on today, sis. Come on, we're going to have a word of prayer. Amen. Come on, let's thank God today. Deaconesses, ministers, preachers, would you come on? Deacons, would you come? We're going to have a word of prayer. Amen. Here on today, our sisters, come back home. Amen. Let me squeeze in right here with you all. Amen. Amen. All right, put your hand right there for me. Amen. Come on, y'all. Y'all slide a little bit over. Amen. We offer Christ to you, oh, my brother. Oh, we, we offer Christ to you, oh, my sister, oh, the Lord, he will give you brand new life, God will give you life that's more, more than abundantly. Oh, come, oh, come on, come on, come on to Christ. Father, we thank you, Lord, today, God, for this is a harvest of return, God. God, like that lady who lost that coin, searched all in the house. God, like that father who lost, had a lost son, God, he waited for that son to return, God. Lord, we're grateful, God, for our sister who has come back home, Lord. God, I pray that you bless this house that we would be ready and right to receive those who come, God. God, I pray you bless us that we would not harm our sister that we would not hurt our sister, that we would not hinder our sister. But God, because we are the house of love, that we will love on our sister, God. And so God, we pray that you bless her, that she could be a blessing to others and others a blessing to her, God. And Father, we won't wait to see it done, but God, we already know it's done in the spirit and it'll manifest here on earth. And so Lord, we give you honor today, God. We give you glory and God, we give you praise. It is in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Come on, let's praise God again. Yes, come on, that's all right, yeah. Come on, let's praise God again. Come on, let's praise God again. That's right, amen. Yes, praise God again. Amen, come on, let's praise God again. Yes, amen. Our sister is going to... Amen. Go into the rear, into the chapel. Come on, let's give the Lord some praise in this house. Come on, let's give the Lord some praise in this house. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord some praise in this house on today. Amen. We're going to open up now for altar prayer. Amen. Here on this, this day. Amen. As we gather around the altar, we encourage us to come on around the altar. Uh, we're lifting up. Amen. Our, our sister, Sister Coco Golf, she's traveling. I think it's Germany. Am I correct? Germany. We want to keep her lifted up in prayer. Um, you heard uh, about praying for Brother Ferguson, who is going to have open heart surgery, the Newsom family here on today I want you to come around the altar and as you come I want you to come with others not just yourself others on your mind today others on your mind today as we come as we come Reverend Hay is going to prepare amen his heart amen to to lead us in a time of prayer but we want you to come gathered amen thinking about others amen y'all come on around y'all come on around come on around the altar come on around come on around come on around today come on around come on around today 
Come on around. Come on around today. Yes, come on around. Come on around. Come on around. Come on around today. There's time and there's room. Oh, I love you and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you more. With bow our heads and close eyes, we come before you, Lord, this morning. We want to acknowledge Sister Newsom. I believe we did, that she lost her son. But Father, we just come this morning to tell you thank you. And as we prepare to depart from this sacred gathering, we are filled with gratitude for the fellowship that we've shared here this morning and the blessing that you have bestowed upon us all. We ask for your continued guidance and protection as we go out into the world, facing the challenges and embracing the opportunities. We thank you, Lord, for Reverend Gabriel Hopper, who put it so plainly that our position can change due to a previous promise, due to providential placement and perpetual provision. For those among us, Lord, who are sick and shut in, we lift them up to you, asking you, Lord, to, to allow your healing hand to touch them and comfort them in, this, in their time of need. May they feel your presence surrounding them bringing peace and bringing strength to their spirits. For those who are mourning the loss of loved ones, we pray for your tender mercy to be upon them, granting them solace and hope amidst their grief. May they find comfort in the promise of your eternal love and the assurance of reuniting them in the life to come. And Lord, as we, we journey forward from this place, help us to become beacons of light, sharing love and kindness and compassion wherever we go. May our words and actions reflect your grace and mercy and truth, drawing others closer to you, Lord, and to one another, especially to those who have come back home here this morning. And now, Lord, as we depart from this place, we ask your protection over each person here. Watch over us as we go about our daily lives, keeping us safe and from harm and leading us in the path of righteousness. Lord, you are a good God. You're a gracious God. Put your loving arms around us collectively and individually as we go out to do what you have told us to do. And Lord, we'll be so careful to give you all the honor and give you all the praise. For it's in the name of our Savior, our Redeemer, Jesus the Christ, that we pray and ask it all. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. As we return back to our seats, amen, here on today, amen, we want you to remain standing here, amen, today, amen, as we return to our seats, amen. Listen, for our online viewers that want to participate, amen, with Compassion International, there is a link uh, that is available for you, amen, that they will make that available for you here on today, amen. Amen here on today. Amen, amen, amen. Oh, and I love, I love you more and adore you just 
Lord, I love you. Whoa, to all of our first time and visitors who have not got to receive the opportunity, we want to meet you over in the visitor center when we conclude services here on today. Amen. And then uh, Reverend Harper will be in the vestibule, amen, at the table booth that is set out in the vestibule to receive you, amen, here on today. Let's praise God and thank God for Reverend Harper again. Come on on today. Amen. Amen. Amen here on today. Amen. We're going to, we're going to prepare to close. Uh, we look forward to Wednesday. We'll be praying, asking that God's favor, amen, would show up in this house his favor would show up in this house 12 noon wherever you are located we encourage you to pray we also then encourage you to join us here 6 30 uh, in the evening on wednesday and we'll be praying corporately together uh, on wednesday evening men leaders men be will be meeting this tuesday uh, give me that time again this tuesday at 6 30 p.m room 107 amen here here on today saints of god we're getting ready to leave but listen tell your neighbor um say neighbor favor we'll track you down god we love you we thank you and we praise you we thank you for this time of worship today thank you for the hands that we were able to shake hugs we were able to give and receive smiles given smiles received thank you for the word on today god god we continue to ask your blessings upon Reverend harper god as he continues to lead this engagement effort throughout the world lord and leading churches and people god to have compassion on those who are impoverished god God, we pray, Lord, that we would not be people who would just try to hoard, but that we would be conduits, allowing your blessing to flow through us, to us, through us, and towards others, God. Remember all of the sick, the shut-in, the bereaved families, God. We pray, God, for Sister Tiffany and Sister Stephanie, God, as they are traveling even now, God. Uh, Lord, you bless the Jones family and hold them in the hollow of your hand. And as the Newsom family, God, make their preparations, God, to say farewell, God, I pray, God, that you would give them strength, supernatural strength, God, and comfort their hearts and their souls. Now, there's been so much death, God, it seems like here recently, God, but I pray, God, in the midst of it all, that we won't allow those things that might affect us to infect us, God that we can praise your name and thank you because we are we are yet alive in the midst of it all God and now may God be so gracious and kind to turn his countenance towards us and to give us peace May God be so kind towards us church that when he turns his countenance towards us it would remind us that favor it will track us down the Lord, he will watch over your life. He'll watch over your coming and your going both now and forevermore. And those that receive this blessing upon their lives will say, Amen. God bless you. Go in peace here on today. Amen. Parents, if you want to hook your children up when to be on the, the youth ushers ministry, Amen. You can see Brother Jaron Ivory. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Love you.